Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to HemingwayLand.com, your source, quality, affordable land in the state of New Mexico. So somehow in all the years that we have been listing properties in the Deming Ranchette subdivision in Luna County, New Mexico, I have never done a subdivision specific video. I've done a whole bunch of videos about properties out there where I've talked about the subdivision, but I've never actually done a video that kind of as a broad brush stroke kind of covers everything you need to know about this region. So we're listing a handful of properties out there today. We anticipate we'll be listing more in the months ahead. So we're going to make this one video. It's more about the subdivision. We're going to post it on each of those listing pages to get granular, to get super specific about a property. If you know you want to buy land out there, but you know you want to compare and contrast, the best ways to do it, as always, guys, are to look at the property specific notes that we have on each of these listing pages. That will enumerate whatever minor differences exist between these properties. Additionally, of course, down here in the photo gallery at the bottom of the page, we will have photos from the subject properties. Furthermore, guys, it, uh, it should be noted that if you want to compare and contrast these properties, if you want to click about through all the listings that we have, right now we're going to have something like eight live on the website, but there may come a time where there's 20 or 50 or something like that. You can do it one of two ways. One, always come to our New Mexico listings page. Scroll down to Luna County. You will see all of the listings here. You can click through them one at a time. That, however, can become a bit tedious. So what I recommend, what we have provided for you quite helpfully here, is on the listing page, we have a click here to see all of our Deming Ranchettes properties. Click on this, and it will bring up this handy Google Sheet which has all of the information enumerated in it about these various properties. For the record, guys, this sheet with all its information is best viewed on a PC or a laptop, not a phone, not a phone. But it has a lot of helpful columns, most notably the GPS coordinates column. Click on this. It'll bring up each of these properties on a map so as you can kind of compare and contrast locations. Uh, additionally, if you want to learn about amenities such as is there power at the lot line, if not, how far away is it? There's a column for that over here. And additionally, guys, there is always a link on these pages for purchasing. You can purchase the properties that way. And over here, there is a link to each of the specific listing pages. So if you see a whole bunch of details that you really like about something, you want to go to that specific listing page, just come over here and voila, click the link. With all that said, guys, with that tedious explanation out of the way, let's get to it. It should be noted we've got uh, one acres, one and a half, two acres, two and a half, three acres, so on and so forth. They they started fifteen hundred for a one acre. They're going to graduate from there. Two thousand for one and a half acres, twenty four hundred for two acres, so on and so forth. Obviously, the larger amount of acreage that we have, the more expensive it will be. Anyway, with all that said, let's bring these up on a map and talk about the subdivision. So down here on each of the listing page, as well as the aforementioned spreadsheet, we have GPS coordinates. Click any one of them and on to the Google Maps, the properties shall appear. Now, it should be noted, guys, we're talking about the Deming Ranchette subdivision in Luna County, New Mexico. This is in the southern portion of the state. Luna County is a square-shaped county that sits right down here. It's got New Mexico, it's got, excuse me, Mexico on its southern border. Uh, we get a lot of calls. How close, how far is this property from Albuquerque? It should be noted that these properties are nowhere close to Albuquerque. Albuquerque is about three and a half hours north. That being said, you do have the second largest city in the state or the second fastest growing city or whatever the specific metric is, I forget. But Las Cruces is over here roughly, if we right click and measure distance, 60 miles, 60 miles from the subject properties in this region. Of course, all that is here along the I-10, so that's a pretty quick drive. It's supposed to be an hour and 15 minutes. My guess is you're doing 75 or 80 most of the way, so you may be able to cut that by a third or something. I don't know. Whatever the case, uh, not only is Las Cruces over here, roughly about an hour and 15 minutes away, but you've also got El Paso, Texas down here, roughly about an hour and 45 minutes away. And it should be noted just before I get into the subdivision specifics that the property itself in this portion of the state sits pretty close to a lot of notable features, aside from the two cities that I just pointed out, which have a lot of, you know, a lot of things going on in them, particularly Las Cruces. You've got White Sands National Park over here. You've got Elephant Butte Lake, which is, of course, the largest body of water in the state of New Mexico. You've got the uh, forest up here, the Guia National Forest, of course, excellent hunting opportunities out there. Lincoln National Forest over here. A lot of things in your backyard besides those things that I've just mentioned. On each of the listing pages, guys, we're going to have links to all these things. The Visit Las Cruces Tourism website, which if you're not familiar, will certainly give you a whole myriad of things you can do and see out there. The Elephant Butte Lake website for all the sort of boating, fishing, jet skiing type of activities you can take part in out there. 
White Sands National Park, a site to see if you're not familiar with it. This website, shockingly, does it, doesn't do it any justice. So Google it and you can see what it looks like out there. But it's a, it's a gorgeous place and uh, definitely worth visiting. And uh, also, it's worth noting, Rockhound State Park sits within Deming Ranchettes. So look at this. Better photos on the Rockhound State Park website than on the Elephant Butte or White Sands website. What's up with that? I don't know. But anyway, Rockhound State Park is also out here within the Deming Ranchettes area. Anyway. Let's get into the subdivision specifics. So as noted, Ohlone County is a square-shaped county. It occupies roughly this amount of space down here. Uh, the I-10 cuts through the northern part of the county, and Deming is the county seat up here. And if we go to satellite view, what you will see if we zoom in on this, is that all of this region right here, everything here, everything up here, and everything here, are all part of Deming Ranchettes. This is one of these subdivisions where a developer came in back in the 60s. They bought up thousands and thousands and thousands of acres of desert land. They chopped all of them up into largely half acre lots and they resold them to a lot of people, many, many of them back east. Uh, but the point is that the subdivision occupies a lot of space out here. Now, one of the things that I really like about this region that I find um, desirable or a good buy for anybody who wants to purchase land in New Mexico, this kind of small dollar land in New Mexico, is that unlike a lot of subdivisions that were, like I just said, created in the 60s, somebody came in, bought up thousands of acres of land, chopped it all up into small portions, blah, blah, blah. The developer who did these chopped everything up into half acres, but they sold them two at a time. So what you will find out here is that most people own at least one acre of land. Most people back in the 60s bought one acre of land. If they were smart enough to deed it to the next generation or they sold it, they sold them, you know, these two half acres at a time. So when environmental law in New Mexico became more uniform in the 70s and there became these sort of, um, let's say, guidelines for how much space you need for a conventional well and a conventional septic system and it made the sort of three quarter acre threshold, the kind of minimum, the kind of gold standard for, if you're gonna develop rural land, you need at least three quarters of an acre. A lot of subdivisions were impacted by that within the state where it became difficult to develop properties out there because nobody actually owned one acre. They all owned half acres or quarter acres. Deming Ranchettes did not suffer that fate. And I'm giving you this history lesson because it's important to note that if you zoom in here on the map, up here at Deming, it's the county seat within Luna County. Obviously, there's the most development up here. There's a Walmart. There's, you know, 7 million types of stores that you will want. Grocery stores, uh, supply stores, hardware stores. Uh, uh, any sort of fast food chain in America has some kind of footprint here. Deming Ranchettes Airport, hospitals. This is a developed region. And it's important to note this because typically when you find these subdivisions, where, again, thousands of small, you know, acreage lots, is that shortly after you come out of the developed region, there is nothing, nothing. It's a no man's land. It's a wasteland, a ghost town for the rest of the subdivision because development simply is not extended that far. That, however, is not the case with Deming Ranchettes. And I like to point this out because it says a couple things. Number one, as I was yapping about earlier in the video, because it was subdivided in such a way, you have land that can be developed all throughout the subdivision, not just up here where there's city utilities, okay? So because of that, if you zoom in on any portion of this map, what you're going to find is at the very least, you'll find some family farms like this. Out here, you will also find home sites throughout the region. All these people have at least one acre of land. Some of them have a few extra lots, two acres, three acres, something like that. But really, anywhere you go in the subdivision, you'll find development. Now, development is not my way of just saying somebody built a house or somebody built a cabin. What it literally means is two things, which again are the benefit of these larger acreage lots, which is that number one, all the roads out here are pretty well maintained. All the roads throughout the entirety of the subdivision uh, are easy to drive on, easy to drive, easy to navigate. That helps to develop the region. Now, I don't know if that's necessarily because Luna County puts forth some major effort to grade these roads on a regular basis because they're genuinely trafficked that much. I think with development comes traffic and that explains some of it. But it's more so because it has a generally type of arid climate out here in which the roads remain not overgrown with brush uh, and pretty easy to manage. Number one. Number two is when you see home sites out in these kind of remote, re what we'll call remote regions, uh, it's also because there are utilities out here. 
If you zoom in on any part of this map, what you will find for the most part out here in Deming Ranchettes is that there are power lines on, let's look. Here's a power line right here. Here's another one. There are utility easements all throughout every one of these roads out here. If not every one, every other one in most places. Point being, you can pretty much buy any kind of land within the Deming Ranchette subdivision and you're never too far from power. Uh, you know, maybe it's a block or two blocks away, but likely not difficult or expensive to get extended out to the subject property. So these are the major benefits of buying land out here is you're not <clears throat> Excuse me. You're in a region that's gonna that's been developed, that's gonna continue to be developed. You already have you know roads you can navigate, utilities, power. In some cases, underground utilities have made their way out to the subject properties, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and that suggests that there will be more development in the future. And hence, property values will go up in the future. Now, I should also point out one quick thing: this giant goose egg that you see right here. This is where Rockhound State Park is that we were talking about earlier. Uh, it's out here in this region. You've got the Florida mountains right here. These actually provide really pretty views. Uh, there's basically no land you can buy in Deming Ranchettes in which you're not going to have really great mountain views, whether you're looking west from over here or you're looking east from over here. Uh, and I know, why don't I pull up some photos from the photo gallery? Now, of course, whenever we get this many properties at once, we just have our photographer go out take about 10 photos from each lot. So we don't have as many photos from these properties as we normally do, but they at least give you a sense of what you're dealing with out here. Number one, this is what most of the roads look like in the area. Maybe, maybe, maybe if you're thinking to buy a property, maybe go out and scout it in a larger truck or off-road capable vehicle. But for the most part, these things can be navigated by any type of vehicle because, again, generally arid climate, not too overgrown so on and so forth. <clears throat> number one, number two, the homes that you see out here in the background, you really see this all throughout the development. Uh, you know, some are nicer than others, but uh, ultimately it's a, it's a subdivision, a very large subdivision, most of the county, in which you can do mobile homes, modular homes. Uh, you could park an RV for up to 30 days. That's per county zoning. Um, you know, you can build a container home as long as it's up to code. Tiny homes, I believe the minimum square footage requirement in Luna County is at least 600 square feet. So depending on your definition of tiny, that may fit it as well, etc. And the other thing, of course, that we get from these photos is just exactly what an undeveloped lot like this would look like, which is that there's, there's you know, some vegetation on it, some overgrowth, things that you're going to have to get landscaped, get excavated before you can start building. But ultimately, it's a, it's a you know, pretty nice flat piece of land, uh, likely not easy, excuse me, likely not difficult to develop, likely not difficult to, you know, at least park a kind of mobile home on while you start to set things up. If you've got a building permit, of course, uh, as noted, you could park an RV out there for, for 30 days, but if you've got a building permit, that goes on much longer, 12 months, probably something like that. And uh, these photos don't do it justice, but of course, here's you know power lines off here in the distance servicing this nearby home site. Uh, as noted, power lines fairly ubiquitous throughout the subdivision. These are some of the aforementioned mountain views that you see from these parcels, and so on and so forth. So that is my really my sort of crash course introduction to everything having to do with Deming Ranchettes. If I went through fast through this, let me just alert you guys. There's some important links here you'll want to look at. Points of interest, this is just anything that I just talked about. This is anything within the general region of Deming Ranchettes that would be an attraction worth seeing. Elephant Butte Lake State Park, White Sands, Rockhound, so on and so forth. All these things within close proximity of the subject properties. <clears throat> Additionally, guys, we've got links down here to the assessor's office, to planning and zoning. If you do have questions about developing the property, uh, you know, obviously in regions like this, SFRs, single family residences are always, uh, you know, you're never going to get any pushback on that. It's when you want to do unconventional things. Earthship homes, probably not, probably not in this region. Tiny homes, as I indicated earlier, anything smaller than 600 feet would probably not be permitted in this region. Uh, but anything else, mobile homes, modular homes, you find a lot of kind of... Uh, what do you call them? I mean, essentially trailers parked out here. As long as they've got cement foundations, that's usually what counties are looking for. Uh, if you scan the map, you'll see more and more of that out here, as well as some SFRs. Uh, but anyway, additionally on this page, just want to point out, we also have links to PNM, that of course is the local utility company. I believe Columbus Electric Co-op is also another one that uh, provides service to this region. Always a good idea if you want to get, you know, if you're going to build something, you want to get connected to the grid, you know powers at the lot line, for instance, with this property that I happen to be showing here, powers one lot over, it's down here servicing this home site right here. Uh, you can call the power company, you can say, hey, I'm buying some land in Deming Ranchettes, you got power one lot over from me, it's servicing a home site, what's it going to take to get one pole extended out to my lot, what does that cost? 
Uh, you know, what are the logistics involved in that? Always good to have those conversations in advance. And uh, as always, guys, we have the link here to the Office of the State Engineer. In New Mexico, this is the government entity that um, provides well permits, water rights for land out there. So if you're going to drill a well, again, uh, you know, most of Deming Ranch House is not serviced by city utilities. So there's no city water or city septic. You're going to have to install those on your own. That means you're drilling a well. And if you're drilling a well, you're probably going to have to deal with these people. So it's a good idea to reach out to them in advance, talk to them about costs, talk about logistics. Talk to local well drillers. Hey, I'm buying some land at Deming Ranchettes. What's the water table like out there? How far down should I expect to drill? Um, it should be noted, by the way, that when you see this many home sites in close proximity to one another, particularly so many family farms out here in this region, it suggests to me that the water table is fairly accessible. Of course, I am not an expert, so reach out. Talk to some people about that. If that's something you plan on doing, know the cost before you get involved with it, okay? Anyway, guys. With all that said, those links are down there at the bottom of the page. Covenants and restrictions that govern these particular units, and there's about a bajillion units out here, so we have the covenants and restrictions per each unit. That'll get into some details about that. None of those are too strict, too onerous, uh, but you can read over those here. Anyway, with all that said, guys, if you are interested in purchasing any one of these properties, of course, just come up to the Buy Now button on any one of these listing pages. It'll bring up a secure checkout page where we ask you for certain information, legal name for deed, tax address, so on and so forth. Agree to the terms and conditions. Click next. On the very next page, you can enter credit or debit card information to purchase the property. Once you purchase the property, within 24 hours, you will have documentation from us in an email, a new deed, plus some supplemental docs for you to review and get back to us on it. For the record, guys, if you're looking at a property, you can't charge the whole thing on one credit card. You have a daily limit, whatever. If you want to, hey, I'm trying to buy a $3,000 property, but I need to do it in three $1,000 payments over three days. That's fine. Give our office a call, 702-919-7170, or shoot us an email, support at HemingwayLand.com, and we will accommodate you with uh, smaller payment links over those three or four or whatever it is days, okay? Anyway, with all that said, guys, uh, thanks for watching the Crash Course in Deming Ranchettes. Hope this was educational. If you have any further questions, shoot us an email or leave a comment here on the YouTube. As always, I appreciate your attention spans. Bye-bye.